What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G Sports.com. Got some changes going on here a little bit. Background looks a little bit different. It's kind of throwing me off because it's a little bit backwards, but it allowed us to get a little bit more depth with the camera. And so my hands don't look as big when I put them out. The microphone doesn't look super big. I'm sure you guys don't want to talk about micro four-third sensors and how depth helps it a little bit or the improved bokeh effect. You want to talk about recruiting. Razorback recruiting specifically. So we're going to get to all of that, your questions, and more on Hog Sports Live. Before we get started, of course, I want to remind you, there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. If you haven't followed the page, go ahead and do so now. Throw us a thumbs up, like the video. Also available on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to that channel. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload new videos. Throw us that five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Leave a nice review so you can let others know what to expect. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can pick up to find your favorite podcast. So, been doing a little work. Was gone for a little bit. You guys probably didn't even notice. But um, changed a few things up here with the studio. Again, we got a little bit better set up here. Probably can't notice a bunch of stuff right now, but behind the scenes, I promise you there's a lot <laughs> a lot different. Going to make things a little bit easier to do the show. Okay, so I want to jump right into this first of all before we get into recruiting stuff. All these top 25 polls are coming out, these way too early top 25 polls. ESPN just dropped their latest one. Arkansas is number 13 in their poll. ESPN says Arkansas's rotation seemed pretty set right after the end of the seasons when the Razorbacks went and reeled in transfers Audis Tony, Stanley Amude, and Chris Likes very quickly. Also been some others, but they've got Arkansas at 13. I like CBS Sports is a little bit better. They have Arkansas at 8. As noted before his team's breakthrough 2021 season, Eric Musselman was prepared for college basketball's changing landscape. The importer, as they call him. So the latest commitment is Barry Dunning, 6'6", 205, small forward, number one ranked player out of Alabama, four-star recruit who had plenty of offers. Alabama, Auburn, Arkansas, Georgia Tech. Could have gone to a lot of places, LSU, Memphis, of course. And... He's the second commitment in the class, and uh, which I believe is currently ranked number 10 nationally. And there's a lot going on with Razorback basketball recruiting. Curtis Wilkerson's on vacation this week, deservedly so. So we're not able to talk to him about it, but he's got a ton of articles on just where Arkansas has been, breaking down what the Barry Dunning commitment means, who he calls a guy with a really strong mid-range game, a lot of potential as a defender, pogo stick athleticism. You can read all that article on, uh, on Hog Sports. What is Arkansas getting in Barry Dunning? By the numbers, as a player, how he fits, all that stuff. Curtis does a fantastic job breaking down our basketball content. So Arkansas has got Barry Dunning and Joseph Pinion. I hope everything's streaming here right, by the way, because – I just say, sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. So <laughs> uh, it's done that before, and it's and it's worked fine. So hopefully everything's going smooth. So if it's not, let me know in the comments. Also, go ahead and get your questions in. We'll get to those in a minute. So Joseph Pinion and Barry Dunning are two uh, Arkansas's two commitments right now. Dunning's number 77 ranked player nationally. Pinion's number 123 nationally. Another story that Curtis has is who could Arkansas who could commit to Arkansas next. It's a nice breakdown. Obviously, there's Khalil Ware, Nick Smith, Darian Ford from inside the state, some guys to watch. Jordan Walsh, who was just offered by Kansas, who's uh, I think he's like a top 50 uh, prospect. Uh, but he's a guy that's a really high flyer, too. So it's a great in-state crop. And then there's in on some, some really impressive guys from out of the state. So a lot to watch. Razorbacks built for more small ball in 21-22. Another Curtis Wilkerson story, and this one is – this is a free story, but, you know, just breaking down all the additions that they've had with, um, you know, just everybody on board. And, uh, you know, that, that was another thing about the Dunning commitment that Curtis likes, and obviously he's not here for next year. But, uh, you know, he's a guy that – Musselman wants to play positionalist basketball. He said that a lot, and, and he's a guy that kind of fits into that mold also. Curtis also – I mean, he's just cranking out – so Curtis, by the way – Congratulations to Curtis. Um, Curtis has been with us for a full year now. I think last week marked his one-year anniversary. So 12 months, 940 articles later. What an addition Curtis Wilkerson has been. Super proud to have him part of the team. But it, this article is a free one. 
how top remaining portal prospects would fit in in Arkansas. So he goes after, I mean, a ton of guys, including Kevin O'Banner. Uh, you guys remember him from Oral Roberts, who just recently entered the, the portal. Uh, but there's several names that Curtis breaks down, just where Arkansas might stand with them, how they might fit in at Arkansas. And also goes into 2023 recruiting roundup. A lot of prospects here, too, obviously. There's a lot to be sorted out for 2023. New Arkansas offer, 2022 five-star center, Ernest Uda Jr. Another breakdown. Breaking down the timeline, his own words, the competition scouting report. If you want to know what's going on with Razorback basketball, you need to be at hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Just $1 for your first month. Try it out. See if you like it. Try it on for size. Now, switching over to football, Arkansas has also been very busy with football lately. Uh, Nico da- uh it's DeVilliers, DeVilliers, like uh, Corella DeVille, DeVilliers. So, Nico has committed to Arkansas as a guy that we've been watching a long time, defensive tackle, 6'4", 275 out of Maumel, the second commitment out of Maumel. Isn't it interesting how, like, there won't be a recruit out of a certain city in Arkansas, which Maumel, what is that, like 10,000 people, so – so you wouldn't expect a lot, but there wouldn't be any, you know, any guys coming out of there. And then there's there's two in one year. It's weird how things work like that. Um, but uh, Nico obviously committed to Arkansas, June twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. I went on vacation last week, and there's just been. I mean, it wasn't really a vacation. We were doing a lot of work, but I didn't go anywhere. But that's uh, always kind of been the joke when I go out of town or something. But this this case. Wasn't out of town, but was on vacation and a lot of commitments. Jalen Lewis, who just recently had visited Arkansas this past month in June, really nice-looking uh, defensive back, 5'11", 175, out of Brownsville, Tennessee, Haywood High School, number 557 prospect in the country, Arkansas, Auburn, Michigan State. He is a, like – he's one of those, like, 25 offer guys. I mean, Florida State, Georgia. You just can't kind of keep going on and on. LSU, Michigan, Mississippi State, South Carolina, Tennessee, Ole Miss, OU, on and on and on. Virginia Tech, Virginia, Wisconsin. Arkansas is pulling a lot of guys out of some weird areas, not traditional areas. I mean, they've got commitments from Michigan. They have a deep snapper commitment out of Wisconsin on scholarship. We'll get to that. And Manny Powell, who just committed, linebacker out of Canton, Ohio. So you got Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio. It's like Brett Bielema and Kurt Anderson are back in town. Not really. I didn't mean that. Not really. But those were kind of the areas that they were getting recruits from. So, you know, Pittman's getting recruits from that region. He's getting guys from Tennessee, Texas, um, you know, Louisiana, Arkansas, of course. Georgia has been a big area. Arkansas just wrapped a bunch of camps. They had a ton of kids from Cedar Grove. Wasn't just like an impressive slew of campers. And, you know, part of that, we talked with Danny a couple weeks ago about that. It's just, you know, with the recruiting cycle moving up, players getting offers so much earlier, you know, really you start seeing like guys that are, you know, rising 10th graders and stuff like that that are that are players to watch instead of guys that are rising seniors because they've, they've already got their offers. They've already started cutting their list these days. So camps, camp landscape's kind of changed a little bit. Manny Powell's number 894 ranked pro- prospect in the country. Uh, had Indiana – Syracuse, Kentucky, Michigan, Missouri, Ole Miss, West Virginia, and, of course, Arkansas. Indiana is another one. I don't know if I mentioned that one. But uh, quite a few offers for him. And uh, a linebacker. you got to love linebacker commits because Arkansas has struggled from a number standpoint in there. And Eli Stein, who, by the way, runs a 4-7-40, 6'3", 215, long snapper, scholarship guy. Now, there's been a lot of people who – have kind of scoffed at the idea of, of, of offering a specialist. And, I mean, I, I get it in a way, but at the same time, if you're going to be a starter, and I can't imagine that it's that difficult to evaluate long snappers, and Jordan Silver, Silverado, is out after this year. So you lose your starting long snapper. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to – time how fast a guy and accurately a guy gets the snap back right they had him in at camp they offered him they expect him to come in and start next year now if he doesn't and it's the same way with kickers and everything they usually they bounce pretty quickly if they don't earn the starting job and and I'll go over that too how that works but uh, I don't have a problem with offering snappers and um, 
and kickers and stuff, especially like snappers is a way easier evaluation than a kicker or punter, apparently. Uh, because, I mean, again, it's just, you know, timing them and accuracy, getting them in camp. So I don't have a problem with this offer at all. He, uh, you know, had a lot of other schools that pursued him. But, um, yeah, if he's going to be a starter for Arkansas, which they easily project him to do next year, not this coming season, but the next, then he should be on scholarship. So, I mean, half of your class, your recruiting class, and in some cases, and we'll get into this a little bit too, in some cases, a lot more than half your class don't even pan out at all. So by that logic, I mean, like, if this guy doesn't pan out, it's not like, what a stupid decision, because, you know, half of your recruits didn't pan out either. It's just the kind of the way things work. So right now, let's see, where is Arkansas ranked right now? 2022 recruiting. They were just 14th last week. Now they're up to 18th and 7th in the SEC. I think they moved all the way up to 4th for a second in the SEC and 14th. They have 14 commitments right now, led by Miles Rouser out of Michigan, Marion Harris, Andrew Chambly, Quincy McAdoo, Rashad DeBinion. Those are your four-star recruits. And then Nico Davier, DeVillier. It's going to be hard to get that right. DeVillier, 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 DeVillier. Um, is your next ranked recruit who's a little bit under four-star status. So that's where things are right now. Now, if you go back and look, as I mentioned, like usually these specialists, if they don't work out, they end up leaving the program pretty early. Eduardo Camara, if you guys remember him, back in the 2010 class, he was supposed to be the bit, you know the next hot shot kicker. He came in. Um, they actually brought in another guy at kicker, actually a punter. So here's how that worked. Arkansas had a kicker and a punter committed in that class, and, and the kicker was Eduardo Camaro. The punter, I can't remember his name because I don't think he ended up doing much, but he left. He decommitted from Arkansas and committed to Texas when Texas offered. And I don't think he ever won the job there. So when they lost that punter, they went to their fallback guy, their fallback punter. Anybody want to take a guess? Zach Hawker. Zach Hawker, if Arkansas doesn't offer Zach Hawker, he takes a scholarship at Arkansas State, okay? So they brought him in as a punter. I remember it was like halfway through fall camp, and they decided to start kicking him. And he ended up winning the, the field goal kicker job, and Eduardo Camara was gone after the semester, the guy that was on scholarship also. And obviously Zach Hawker stayed on scholarship. Colt Hedlund in 2014 was the next guy they brought in as a scholarship kicker. Now, Cole had his struggles at Arkansas, obviously, but he did win the starting job. He was the starting kicker for a while until that TCU game when he lost it. And after that, when he lost the job, uh, he ended up leaving the program, transferred to North Texas where he came back and, like, made every single kick that he made against – that he kicked against Arkansas, of course. He was like 7 of 7 on all of his kicks, field goals and extra points. Of course he was, you know. So – but anyway – he lost a job, he left. Now, Blake Johnson probably lingered around a little bit longer than you would have expected. He came in as a scholarship punter. He was like the number one ranked punter in the country. Number seven, actually. But he's a top ten punter. And uh, he hung around for a few years and never really won the starting job. I mean, he did. He started some, you know, with mixed reviews to say it nicely, I guess, but ended up leaving the program. A.J. Reed, uh, who they brought in from Duke, he could have came back for another year, but never won the starting job. They brought him in as a scholarship transfer, didn't win the starting job, and he, he didn't return. George Caratan would be the other one who came in from uh, Michigan as a punter, and uh, he just recently entered the transfer portal after the spring. Um, and he punted a few times, but never won the starting job. So, yeah, they come in, but it's not like they stick around on scholarship just kicking in practice and never winning the starting job. So that's my thoughts on that. Danny's got a big breakdown, big red board. For those of you who aren't familiar with the big red board, it's a VIP article. Danny updates this pretty regularly. Uh, this today's uh, edition is just for offense. Now he takes the all the guys that uh, are really reciprocating interest. And it looks like from the way – Things shake out here. It doesn't look like Arkansas is going to bring in a quarterback in this class. So, you know, they technically brought in two in the last – well, three, really. They brought in three because, they, you know, Cade Renfro also uh, is a scholarship-level guy who I think is probably – you know, it was probably said 
you know, we'll put you on scholarship after a year because now you can walk on for a year and then the next semester, uh, the next year you can go on scholarship. It used to be two years for walk-ons to not count against an incoming recruiting class. So I would I would think that Cade Renfro, just based on what we've seen on him so far, will probably end up being a scholarship guy. Um, you know, and that's a position where players transfer in and out quite often. So we'll see how things go. And there's also always the transfer portal for, for picking up quarterbacks. But it doesn't look like – and it's not because maybe they don't want one. It's just like the interest for the guy that they want – really hasn't been there so and a part of that could be you know KJ Jefferson looking like being a first year starter they just brought in Malik Hornsby who's like a top 100 type of player so that's probably probably that got a couple commitments obviously and DeBinion and James Joyner at running back they're maybe pursuing looking at some other guys but I don't know if they're going to end up getting any more Danny also adds the the list of scholarship players that are currently on the roster you can get an idea how the roster shakes out kind of paints the big picture Quincy McAdoo committed, obviously. There's some other guys. Janarian Bonner, Chaz Nimrod. Faison Wilson looks like that's dropping off pretty pretty significantly. It looked like he was going to commit to Arkansas for a while there and not going to happen. Tyrus Washington, a guy to watch at tight end, along with Dax Courtney, who's already committed out of Clarendon. And a few offensive linemen to keep an eye on. Arkansas already has three on board. I know that they would like to bring in at least one more, I would assume. So Arkansas's offensive line finally looks in really good shape. And I, I recently did an article, you know, top 10 Razorback offensive linemen. And it's a, it's a solid 10. And what you like about it is, you know, you've got this group of young guys with high ceilings and, you know, these older, more experienced guys who are going to be, I think, a good offensive line. There will be some games where they're overmatched, you know, some of the high-end opponents that they face. But for most opponents, I think, in the SEC, they should be able to hold their own or win those battles so we'll see so going back to what I was talking about earlier and you can read this article more in depth 2016 Arkansas Razorbacks recruiting class review every every year in recruiting we're up in arms aren't we Arkansas isn't getting the respect they deserve and you know Brett Bielema was the biggest um the biggest guy that I've ever seen do like he was constantly on national signing day, criticizing recruiting analysts and uh, recruiting services and stuff like that. Cause he's, he trusts his guys versus some guys he had never met, you know, and he would always just kind of, kind of go poo poo on recruiting services a little bit, which I always thought was whatever. But uh, you know, we're sitting there in the front row covering his signing day and stuff. And he's like pooping on us a little bit. And I look, I do love Brett. I mean, like personally, like just talking to him on the side and stuff, but I know, you know, obviously he did some things that were just like, well, you know, why are you saying that? Why are you doing that? You know, they're like, like little things like, you know, things that he would do in recruiting, like you'd get down to the last few players to fill a class and there'd be three spots left and five possibilities because they didn't offer enough players. They offered fewer players than any other team in the SEC aside from Texas A&M and LSU in the time that he was there. And LSU knows who they're getting in their backyard. Texas A&M knows who they're getting. So they didn't have to offer a lot of players. Arkansas doesn't have that backyard, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense. And they still use that same old school philosophy, like a scholarship offer from us is – is a guaranteed offer, you know, or we want to offer you when you come on campus and, and, you know, do it in person. But what really matters to these guys and what they end up asking themselves, like why in Arkansas offering? Or they'll cut you before you've offered, you know, before you've given a real offer. And all these other schools are out there. And I, I commend him in a way, like this, it's the right thing to do, like give a guy an offer that's committable. Whereas all these other schools are not playing by that same set of rules. They're offering whatever, you know just because they know that they'll get cut because the recruiting has moved up so much and part of the calendar hasn't adjusted that. Like, you can't send out official offers until what? August 1st, I think? Is that the day? I think that's when you can send it of a senior year. So everything else is just like, yeah, we want to offer you. You know? I mean, it doesn't really mean anything. But um, what means a lot to these guys is being the first offer, my first offer from an SEC team, my first Power 5 offer. Those kind of things matter versus – waiting until the guy's on campus to offer him in person. It's just old school. It doesn't work. And and Brett did that kind of stuff. I'm sure he's probably learned some stuff along the way. Um, I'm pulling for him at, at Illinois. But uh, I just want to go over this 2016 recruiting class, and I'm, I'm kind of you know just going back and looking at some of these past classes and stuff. So McTelvin Aguim was the highest-ranked recruit in that class. He was a five-star, 20th best player in the nation. He ended up being a good player. He was drafted number 95 overall. 
I don't know that he lived up to five star status, right? I mean, he was a freshman all American or freshman all SEC player, but that was the only all SEC team he ever made aside from some preseason list. So didn't quite live up to uh, the billing, but he's still a top one hundred type of player, obviously. Drafted number 95 overall. Devall Whaler was number 101 ranked prospect in the country, number three running back. Never had a 1,000-yard season. I mean, the thing about running back is that's a pretty easy position to evaluate. So, I don't know what happened with Devall exactly, but his production did drop off a lot, obviously. And obviously, you know, getting fewer carries, um, you know, as the years went on. But part in Chad Morris's, you know, Offense probably played a little bit of a role in that, but um, he definitely didn't live up to the ranking, and uh, and I don't believe I guess never made it out of any training camp. I think he missed the first cut last year. Um, but this is a group overall. This 2016 class there, and there are two players still here: uh, Dion Edwards, safety turn linebacker; T.J. Hammonds, running back turn wide receiver turn running back turn wide receiver turn running back are still on campus, taking advantage of that extra year. But uh, this is a group that went like 18 and 42 over five years, over the last five years. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't good. Um, next up would have been Austin Capps, who's a four-star defensive lineman. Never started on the defensive line, ended up moving to offensive line, started his senior year for eight games. Um, he was a number 230 recruit in the country, which says he should have been drafted like seventh roundish, but wasn't, didn't make it out of training camp either. So. Didn't really live up. T.J. Hammonds was next, highest-ranked recruit in that class, number 239 overall. Still on campus, so there's still a chance. <laughs> T.J. is still here, so there's still a chance. But aside from just showing flashes here and there, you know, he had a little bit of an issue where he was removed the team, had to earn his way back on scholarship and stuff like that. And I love T.J. Hammonds, by the way. I really do. Personality, great kid. Uh, but four-star, he hasn't lived up to it. I mean, that's a guy that I'm pulling for, too. But, I mean, if I'm being honest – a four-star running back should be like, you know, a major contributor. And he hasn't quite been that. Briston Guidry had a lot of injuries. I mean, he had his knee scoped before he ever played. Like his redshirt freshman year when he got on campus, they scoped his knee. Uh, he had arthroscopic knee surgery. So, uh, after redshirting, played in 11 games, played in eight games the next year, early retirement, just too many surgeries, too many injuries. So, you never really know. I think he could have been a good player, but you never really know. Jake Heinrich was uh, the last four-star recruit in that class. Number 309 overall, also back injuries, early retirement. You never know. I don't think he was, like, pushing or anything for uh, any major playing time before the injuries. But, um, again, you just don't never know. Jordan Jones, obviously, he was probably a little too high at number 534 overall. Now, he did have a good redshirt freshman season where he started most of the year, 21 catches, 401 yards, three touchdowns. Fell into a backup role in 2018. Transferred to Cincinnati, pretty, I think, disgruntled over it. Um, but only had 13 catches for 157 yards last year at Cincy. Jonathan Marshall was the first overachiever on this list. First overachiever. And it took him till his senior year to become a starter. He went number 207 in last April's NFL draft, this past April. He was the number 633 overall recruit in the nation. So, Jonathan Marshall, first guy that was wrongly ranked I guess in the in the other way Kofi Botang injuries never know if he would have been good or not 656 overall Lexi Jean Baptiste linebacker turned defensive end had a really bad foot injury but never never really contributed uh 693 overall recruit in the nation second guy to overachieve is Dijon Harris Scooter he was the number 11th ranked recruit in Arkansas's class that year number 11 he was an all-SEC freshman and then made three straight all SEC teams after that. Cut by New England on final cuts. Didn't wasn't drafted, but picked up by Green Bay. Played in uh, activated for two weeks. Number seven hundred twenty three overall recruit in the nation. So he definitely overachieved. Wasn't drafted, but was all SEC and made an NFL roster for a little bit. And maybe he'll continue on that. Uh, Paul Ramirez, the number ninety JUCO recruit in the country. Action in three games. I wouldn't. I mean, maybe he did. Maybe he didn't live up. Giovanni de France, 840 ranked prospect in the country. A lot of injury issues. Didn't end up finishing his career at Arkansas. Deion Edwards is still here, 862 nationally. Pretty much been in a reserve role. All right, the third and last guy who overachieved was Cole Kelly. Now you say, well, Cole Kelly wasn't that good at Arkansas. He was still the number 870 ranked player in the country. Three star. Shouldn't have been a starting quarterback in the SEC based on that ranking. And he was. No matter how good or bad he was, 
he was still that. And then he transferred to southeastern, southeastern Louisiana. There's probably some people out there that don't know that last season Cole Kelly won the Walter Payton Award, which is the FCS version of the Heisman Trophy. Cole Kelly won the FCS version of the Heisman last year at Southeastern Louisiana. Threw for 2,662 yards, 18 touchdowns, seven rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns, didn't play you know, the same number of games, but led the nation in passing. Cole Kelly, the steamboat, the grave digger. FCS Heisman winner, Walter Payton Award. The rest of the class is pretty fairly ranked, probably. Michael Taylor, if you remember him, a defensive end. Brito Tut, Deion Malone, all outside the top 100 junior colleges. Uh, fullback Hayden Johnson might have been a little underrated. I mean, he played, but, you know, the end of his career, he's moved to tight end, didn't really fit in the offense. Grayson Gunner, Micah Smith, three-star recruits outside the top 50 of their positions, not nationally ranked. D. Walker, the linebacker, he might have had a shot, but was moved from the team, number 99 outside linebacker in the nation but ran some off-field stuff. So, 2016 class, I would say that was dramatically overrated. But you're not going to hear, like, Brett come back and say, yeah, I was man, we, we messed that one up. We did not evaluate or develop that class very well. Not going to hear that. Just going to hear, you know, more reasons why recruiting rankings shouldn't be trusted. When the fact of the matter is, half of your class is going to be busts half of them and the nfl they're still going to draft ryan leaf they're still going to draft jamarcus russell they got every bit of film from high school recruiting ranking evaluations everything from college talk to coaches poke prod medical exams psychology i mean psychological exams everything you can imagine and they still screw it up over and over again still I got to about everything I wanted to get to before I get to your questions here. SEC Media Days is up next, folks. When is SEC Media Days? July 19th to 22. Arkansas is the 22nd. I'm actually not going for the whole thing this year. And it's just because Arkansas is at the back end. Normally, if Arkansas was in the middle of it or early, I would I would go for the for the whole thing like I normally do. But this is the first time I think I've been covering them that they've been on the last day. I don't know why it's worked out that way, but it's the last day, kind of the less celebrated day. Everybody's kind of moving out. But uh, so I'm going to go on the 21st, be there for Arkansas the 22nd, come home on the 23rd. And then, guys, it's we're like a week out. We're like a week out from it. Fall camp. It's not far away. Today's July 6th. I mean, we're talking like less than four weeks now. All right. I hope this is ran i mean I, all i get is sorry we're having trouble playing this video so i hope i hasn't been just talking and nobody can can watch the live show let me know what you think of the the new setup a little bit is it throwing you off with the you know the background we tilted everything a little bit i think it looks better it feels better in here i got a little more space paul reese says we'll pick suey Casey Simmons says, got tickets to Texas at Arkansas, and the hotel prices are, are outrageous. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be outrageous. It's good to have buddies that still live in Fayetteville and ask if they can, you can crash at their house. But, I mean, you know, once you get to be about in your mid, late 30s, you kind of got to stop crashing at your buddy's house, don't you, and step up and get your hotel room. <laughs> Everybody's got kids and stuff. Who's this man staying at our house, Daddy? <laughs> you got, you kind of just got to get your own place these days if you're if you're that age. But, um, yeah, so hotel prices, yeah, I mean, you're going to have to stay, what, two-night minimum? Yeah, I believe it. Watching from SF Bay of the California, enjoying the show as always. San Francisco Bay. Ryan Horn says, do you think we'll see packages just for Malik this year because he's so electric? I think there's a definite possibility we'll see certain stuff go in for Malik Hornsby. I think he will play some this year just because, um, you know, I think there will be situations where you don't want to have K.J. Jefferson in there where, you know, maybe it's a running down or something. But I, I think they'll they'll mix him in a little bit. And he is electric. I mean, there are times, guys, in the spring when, you know, he would roll out and decide to turn up his feet. I mean, it doesn't even look like he's moving that fast. He just just goes. He's really fast. I'm anxious to see what he does. 
He reminds me of like Pat White a little bit. Former West Virginia quarterback. What are the chances we land Obabanar? Obaba, no, no, Obabanar. Probably a Curtis question. Quint Stewart says, yeah, you're on my screen. Good. Appreciate that, Quint. Bo Press says, how new basketball players, how, how new basketball players do we have who's coming back from last year? Wow. Let's see. Basketball recruiting. Commitments. Let's see how we got here. And there's been a lot of change, so it's a lot to keep up with, I understand. So you got Chance Moore. Uh, Echo Mawain is not coming, obviously. He's going to OU, I think. Chance Moore is the only high school kid. And you got transfers in. You got Trey Wade. You've got Jackson Robinson. Audis Tony. DC Tony. Chris Likes. Stanley Amude. Is that everybody? Is that five plus one, six? Is that six coming in? And then basketball roster. You got Devo Davis coming back. Ethan Henderson's transferred. Abiyami Eel is transferred. Vance Jackson's not coming back to Arkansas. He's, I believe, entered the portal. Kamani Johnson, Moses Moody's going to get drafted maybe in the top 10. JD Note's coming back. Amike Obukwulu, I never really knew how to say his name, but he's, he's transferred also. KK Robinson's back, or. I mean, I guess he barely played last year because of the injury. Desi's coming – or Desi's going to uh, ASU. Justin Smith is going pro. Jalen Tate going pro. Connor Vanover, Connor Vanover is back and Jalen Williams is back. So, a lot more back than was the year before. And a lot of guys coming in. I've said, like, Arkansas has got a chance in my mind to win the national championship. I'm just saying I think they do. I think they've got the pieces to compete. Now, it's going to take some luck. You've got to get lucky. But I think they've got some pieces to, to possibly do it. I really do. I feel crazy saying that. But, like, when I look at this roster, I mean, it's a reason to be excited about Razorback sports, baseball, basketball, football. Football is going to be interesting, isn't it? Football is going to be real interesting. There's some winnable games at home in football. And who knows? I mean, who knows what can happen on the road? LSU last year, I thought I did not think LSU was a very good team. As I mean, they're coming off a national championship and all that and everything, but Arkansas should have beaten them and would have beaten them if the defensive line wasn't decimated last year. They would have beaten LSU. There's a lot of what might have been. Like, what if they hadn't been straight up robbed against Auburn? Um what if they score a little bit later against Missouri or Grant Morgan doesn't get hurt and Jalen Catalan doesn't get ejected? <laughs> you know, what about that? Well, you know, what about LSU? What if their roster hadn't been decimated? What if they get to play TCU in the bowl game instead of you know, TCU ended up um, opting out, I guess, of the bowl game? So, I mean, there's a lot of what ifs. They could have they could have had a lot better record last year. I think people might be underselling the football team a little bit. Wesley Harris says, what do you see our starting lineup in basketball being? Oh, my gosh, that's – I can't even imagine. So, it's almost impossible. It really is. I mean, I think Debo starts. I think J.D. Note has a chance to start. Does K.K. start? Possibly. Jalen Williams is going to start. Amude, D.C. Tony. I mean, it's impossible. I mean, like, after the season, I could put it together pretty well. It is impossible to put together a starting lineup, in my opinion, right now. Jackson Robinson, Trey Wade, I mean, there's no way. There's no way <laughs> to tell. Bo Diamond Scaife says, what are some of the timelines for football recruits and their commitment dates? Any coming soon? Well, they just had a big wave of them. I don't know that there's anybody, like, about to jump on board. I say that, and who knows what can happen. But, you know, they've got 14 commitments right now, which is a good bit for, for right now. So I don't know that I would say any of them are, like, a bunt, about to jump on board. I mean, you always got to watch the in-state guys. In-state guys could pop, I guess. 
Ethan Malone says Mike Irwin mentioned something about Rocket Sanders moving to linebacker. Any truth to that? Sure, hope not. I haven't heard any of that. I mean, he could he play linebacker? Probably. I want to see him stay at running back. I think that they need a big back like that at running back. So I hope he stays there. But he could. I mean, he was listed as an athlete. Razorback Howard says, who do you think will commit to us next, basketball or football? Man, I couldn't I couldn't say. Walsh, maybe. I mean, I think that would be the guy you would hope for. <laughs> Nimrod in basket in football, maybe. Casey French Fulton says, so glad to see you on here. So ready for fall football. Me too. Scott Fletcher says, 25 is max, but how many already counts toward this football class? How many are left? Will we sign them or hold some back for transfers? Uh, based on what I can see, they don't have any in the future class that they could count back. Or, excuse me, they don't have any spots in the future class. So it's going to be 25, a 25 hard cap, unless, they, you know, they finagle some blue shirt type of stuff. So I, don't, I, don't, I think you always keep some spots open this day and age. You're going to keep three spots probably at least open for transfer possibilities. I mean, it's just too easy to get – a nice quick fix in the transfer portal. So, yes, you want to continue to develop from the high school ranks, obviously, but Tyler Tober says, how many football hogs do we currently have still in the portal? That's a great question. That I have. I would have to do some research on that and come back to you, but there are quite a few guys that are just sitting there in the portal with no place to go. Taylor Bearden says, how is Zach Zemos, Zymus, Zymus? Looking this offseason, needed to put on weight to be a linebacker. He has put on weight, but he is not playing linebacker anymore. He is playing safety. He's a big safety now. So, I don't know if I would say he's, like, impacting the two deep at this point, kind of rolling with the third team, but he's at safety. He's like a Steve atwater size safety now. Ken M. Black says, love your content. Appreciate you, Ken. Jacob Botwinick says, how will COVID affect anything at Razorback Stadium this fall? I mean, there'll probably be some kind of hiccups here and there, but I sure am hoping that everything moves smoothly and they finally pack that stadium. They have not filled Razorback Stadium. Since they expanded it in 2018, there has not been a full crowd in that stadium. So Texas game, there's your opportunity. I still think there'll be people, you know, who stay home or – you know, or hesitant to get out. I mean, you still see people that are, you know, being extra cautious, and obviously there's reason for that. Some people have health concerns and stuff like that, and I, I can appreciate that. But I'll be honest with you, like, I'm careful about stuff still, but I'm going about my life now. I mean, to me, like, once everybody had a chance to get vaccinated, I don't want to say, like, you're on your own now. That's not what I mean, but – we got to move on, <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm going to respect people who, you know, wish to do things a certain way, you know, because I understand that. But for me personally, I haven't, I haven't carried a mask with me in a while now. And I'm vaccinated, obviously. And I think if, they, if people – I think you would get more people vaccinated if you told everybody, like, if you are vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask anywhere. I think more people would probably do it. Tyler Tober says, have the Hogs signed an endorsement deal since Knox? Um, other Hogs signed an endorsement deal since Knox. Not that I'm aware of. I saw one restaurant establishment mention that they've been in talks with several student athletes. I would imagine some more stuff's coming down the pipe. That was kind of random with Knox, but good for him. Ken M. Black says, what deals are coming up for Hog Sports? excuse me, for subscriptions. Well, right now we're doing $1 for your first month, 30% off for your first year. We're going to have some stuff is we start creeping up a little closer to SEC Media Days. I promise you we'll have some really, really sweet deals for you that you'll like. So if you want to wait, I can understand. It's still just a dollar for your first month right now, though. Quint Stewart says, do you think they will do better this year? I mean, like we'll do, you know, we'll continue on with our dollar the first month deal. But, you know, if you want the deals that we'll have, Ken, coming up are more like long-term deals like you know a certain percentage off an annual subscription a pretty significant or you know we might allow people to um, 
do something with that uh, Paramount Plus offer, which we, you know, still get. So if you sign up for your dollar first month and then you decide you want to keep it and you go full price the next month, then you're eligible for Paramount Plus for as long as you have a subscription to Hog Sports, which is like a hundred dollars a year annual value. So Hog Sports is about a hundred bucks. Paramount Plus is about a hundred bucks. So for a year, so you get one of them free. So pretty pretty sweet deal right there, just in and of itself, without any kind of special. Quint Stewart says, do you think they will do better this year? They didn't do well last year. If you mean football, I think they would have won six games last year, Quint. And, again, I think they got robbed against Auburn. I think they could have beaten LSU had not been for the COVID stuff. Um, I think they probably should have beaten Missouri also. So, I think they would have won six games, counting those three non-conference games. Probably wouldn't have beat Notre Dame up there in South Bend, although they didn't play very well that week against Duke, so who knows. But, um I think they're on the right track in football. We'll see. You never know. KJ could be a disaster. I don't think he's going to be, but you never really know until they get out there. So, Logan Dowling says, you could tell last season that there was obvious change in how our guys played. I think being more prepared and having more of our playbook down this year result in us having a pretty good season. Yeah, I mean, that's another thing to factor in. Like, there were other teams out there that had been with their coach for a number of years. Arkansas had a new coordinators on both sides of the ball, new head coach, full new coaching staff except for Justin Stepp. I mean, that's that's a lot to start over with, and they didn't have any spring ball. So, that's something to consider. Jacob Botwinick says, I, I know I asked this last year, but how – does it feel going into a press conference without Chad Morris there? <laughs> a lot better. A lot better. I mean, listening to Chad just kind of stumble through a press conference, not answer questions. Like, I can re- – you guys remember, like, when TJ w- had to leave the team for a little bit and he was just like, I don't know. I was like, is he coming back to the team? Is there a reason he's gone? I don't, I don't know. And he knew. Like, you know, you can just say, like, guys, I can't say anything. Like, it was so stupid, some of the stuff. And, you know, he he's back – you know, coaching high school now, which maybe that's – maybe he's somehow fits in there better. I don't know. I don't know what would make him a good high school coach versus an awful collegiate coach. Because to me, like, you, you can coach or you can't. I mean, kids will follow you or you can't. So I don't know what it is. But, man, his press conferences were awful. Like, the more and more I got there, I was just like, is this guy serious right now? Like, he's – I've never seen somebody say so much without saying anything at all. Don't get me started on that, Jacob. Keith Johnson says, "Why is a specialist not counted toward recruiting ranking?" They are. They were counted again. They're counted toward the recruiting ranking. Ken Black says, "Thank you for your info updates on subscription. No need to mention on this post. Just know it's great. I'll wait for those deals. All right, appreciate you, Ken, and all of you guys should sign up. Also, even if you're waiting for a deal." Again, there's some pretty good pretty good options out there. The dollar first month is pretty good. Decide you like it, you get free Paramount Plus and your subscription to Hog Sports also is a pretty good deal. All right, before we cut out of here, guys, I want to remind you one more time, there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. Be sure, if you have not, follow the page on Facebook Live. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Hit the notifications bell. Throw us a like or a thumbs up on both of those channels. Comment share let other people know about the show also available on apple Podcasts. hit that five star rating leave a review let others know what to think also available on spotify stitcher anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast it's good to be back hope you guys like the new setup a little bit makes things a little bit easier see y'all my hands aren't huge actually they kind of look small i have pretty big hands they kind of look small but i used to i put my hands out and they were just like take up half the screen they don't do that anymore all right everybody we'll be back with you guys we might do a show late Next week, probably be back on Monday, though. Unless something crazy happens, we might come back for that. All right. Thanks for joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time. 